Welcome. Thank you for joining our NSolver video tutorial series. In this lesson, we'll provide an overview of NanoString's gene expression assay, including a review of the chemistry and the instrumentation. NanoString technology was originally invented in Leroy Hood's lab at the Institute for Systems Biology. It is a digital counting technology that enables direct single molecule counting of up to 800 different targets per sample. The nanostring assay uses optical molecular barcodes to label individual mRNA transcripts as shown in the figure on the right. Then, after the individual mRNA molecules have been labeled with the barcodes, they are mobilized to a slide surface. This is represented by the image in the bottom left. Finally, a picture of the slide is taken and gene expression is quantified by directly counting each individual barcode that is bound on the slide surface. The assay is completely enzyme-free. There is no reverse transcription or amplification of the RNA. This direct single molecule counting results in exceptionally precise and reproducible measurements and is robust across diverse sample types and in samples of poor or variable quality, such as formalin-fixed paraffin-embedded tissue samples that are prominent in clinical research. So now let's take a closer look at the nanostring barcodes and the chemistry of the gene expression assay. The gene expression assay utilizes two probes, the capture probe on the left and the reporter probe on the right. These are DNA oligo probes. Each probe contains a hybridization region of approximately 50 nucleotides that is designed to be specific for the target of interest. The capture probe contains a biotin at the end. The purpose of this probe is to bind to and capture the RNA sample and then immobilize it to a streptavidin coated slide where it can be counted. The reporter probe contains a molecular barcode. This is a six spot fluorescent barcode and each spot can be one of four different colors. As shown in the table in the bottom right, each gene that you want to quantify is assigned one unique color combination. For example, the XLSA gene is assigned the color combination of blue, yellow, red, blue, green, blue. To measure additional genes such as FOX5 and PDCD1, we simply alter the color combination to create unique barcodes for each target gene. The barcodes are fluorescent, but the assay does not measure the intensity of the barcodes and convert that as an analog signal into a quantity. Instead, the assay simply counts individual barcodes, which is equivalent to directly counting individual mRNA molecules. To set up the gene expression assay, the capture probes and the reporter probes are combined with the RNA sample in solution to form hybridization complexes. The setup of this hybridization reaction contains the only manual pipetting steps in the entire assay, and it can be completed in a matter of just a few minutes. The key feature of this reaction is that it's completely enzyme-free. No reverse transcriptase or polymerase are required, leading to exceptionally precise, robust, and reproducible measurements. To set up the assay, just four pipetting steps are required per sample. For each sample, combine capture probe, reporter probe, your RNA, and hybridization buffer in solution. Then load this reaction into a standard thermocycler set to 65 degrees Celsius, and let this solution phase hybridization run overnight. The following morning, hybridization complexes as shown in this image will have formed. The RNA is represented as the red strand threaded through the middle of the complex. On the left, the capture probe is hybridized to 50 nucleotides, and on the right, the reporter probe is also hybridized to 50 nucleotides. Together, the two probes hybridize to a span of 100 consecutive nucleotides. There is no gap between the binding region of the two probes. These hybridization complexes are the actual molecules that are counted in the assay. Once these complexes have formed, the rest of the assay is performed with automated instruments. Hands-on time for the instruments is minimal, requiring just a few minutes, and there's no more manual pipetting. The first step after hybridization is to load the hybridization reaction into the instrument. As shown on the left side of the figure, the instrument will first perform two rounds of magnetic bead purification to remove excess capture probes and excess reporter probes that are not incorporated into hybridization complexes. Then, as shown in the middle, the instrument will load the purified sample onto a streptavidin coated slide. The biotin on the end of the capture probe is utilized in this step to mobilize the purified sample to the slide surface through a biotin streptavidin interaction. Once the complexes are immobilized, the last step, as shown on the right, is imaging. 
the instrument will apply an electric current or a fluidic flow across the slide, causing all of the molecules to lay down flat on the surface. This also orients the molecules in the same direction, and it also extends them. Once this has been completed, a fixative is applied to the slide, and the instrument images the slide surface to create a picture that is used for single molecule counting and data collection. The raw data that are collected from the slide image are represented here in the table in the middle. The first column contains a list of the gene targets that are being quantified, and each column to the right of that represents individual samples. As an example, let's pretend that the slide image on the left represents sample number one, which is the first data column in the table. To quantify the first gene in the table, SPP1, the system will know which colored barcode is unique to SPP1 and then count the number of times it sees that barcode on the slide image. That count of barcodes is the data point. So in this example, the system counted 8,002 barcodes for SPP1 on the slide, and this directly corresponds to 8,002 counts of SPP1 mRNA molecules. The raw data represent raw counts of individual molecules. To process the data, they are imported into NSolver software. Within NSolver, QC checks are run to assess technical assay performance, and then data are normalized to internal controls and a set of reference genes, which are also called housekeeping genes. In the end, the data analysis process will generate highly precise relative counts that can be interpreted in terms of relative change across samples. A standard curve is not run to generate absolute counts. Thank you for joining us for this technology overview of the gene expression assay. If you have additional questions, please contact Nanostring support by email at support at nanostring.com or by phone at 888-358-6266. Please continue your education by following our NSolver video training curriculum at the URL shown below. Thank you.